Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we have a late night insight video or quick hit video on a fragrance that I will probably never own a full bottle, but these late night insight videos are just meant to kind of give my thoughts on a, on such a fragrance. Well, I'll probably never have a full bottle, but a friend from the uh, community very kindly sent me a decant. So I've been wearing it to bed the last couple nights. And um, so this is probably the third time I've had a chance to test this. And uh, my feelings on it have not changed over that time, which is good. I am consistent on this fragrance and really on this house. Uh, but the house is called Digit and Zach. And this particular fragrance is called Anbar December Edition. Now, um, if you are not familiar with the brand, Digit and Zach released a fragrance called Anbar. Um, in I believe it was 2022, later on in the year, probably December, my perceptive powers of observation tell me, uh, they released this little bad boy. And this was like a take on Ambar, almost like a, uh, a flanker of, of Ambar. Now, uh, real quick, if you're not familiar with the house, um, two gentlemen, uh, Natish Digit and uh, Mr. Zach, I don't know Zach's first name. Uh, maybe Zach is his first name, and there's a last name that's not on there, but Digit and Zach were two gentlemen, and they have agreed to go their separate ways. Uh, and so I've reviewed a couple from the channel, like for example, Rising Mysore. There was a one, two, three, maybe even a four. I reviewed two just because that's the juice that I've had, but people have told me that they're very, very similar, one, two, three, and four, so it really doesn't matter. You can check out my, my review on Rising Mysore. That's probably one of my favorite from the houses, if I'm, if I'm being perfectly honest. Um, although I do like this, and um, I liked Emperor's Court, which I also have a review on the channel. So there's things from the uh, brand that I liked. I really did not like Rising Cologne, but I haven't tried a lot. And they're a house that has put out a lot. But what I've kind of stuck my toe in the water, I'm lukewarm on the house. Um, I don't think it's necessarily a bad house, but I would rate them underneath the Arise La Dore's, the Bortnikoff's, the Ansar's. I would put them as a second tier artisanal house with the Prin Lomrosses of the world, in, in my personal opinion. That's just one Ram's opinion. Don't get upset if they're your favorite house. I just feel like um, I have not been very impressed with what I've smelled, although it's 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 not bad. It's not shite, okay? It's just not at the level that I would expect from an artisanal perfume house is the way that I would put it. But they're closing up shop, okay? And uh, what's happening is they're kind of going their separate ways. Zach is moving to Dubai or something from, from what I remember. And uh, Natish uh, Digit is releasing his own line of perfumes. So we will be dipping into this very soon. I've talked about this on the channel, but I wanted to kind of close out the, the Digit and Zach years before we moved on to the next house, which is called uh, Parito Moreno. Uh, and these, I have all three. He very kindly sent me all three. I just haven't talked about them yet on the channel. Well, I have talked about them, but I haven't reviewed them yet. This is the most expensive one called Not Yet, Not Dark Yet for $170. These two are both $150. King's Empire and um, Meditation Mist, which is probably my favorite. Meditation Mist is um, very, very close to Bois d'Argent. So they smell much more like designer, like high-end designers, this, this particular brand, Perito um, Morenos. They don't smell as much like the artisanal house that Digit and Zach was. So it's a little bit of a uh, departure, but these are good quality. Like if you're looking for, you don't wanna spend three, four, $500 on, you know, a big bottle of Bois d'Argent or a vintage bottle of Bois d'Argent, you could go for something like Meditation Mist. Um, you know, King's Empire was good. All three of them were good, actually. Uh, I will review them. I just, same thing. I don't know if I would spend my money on them, but they're good. So, um, so let's talk about Ambar. So, Ambar is supposed to evoke the experience of old souk and by lanes. Dubai is Ambar. It's comforting, exotic and sensual is what the brand says um now uh so here is kind of the thing i guess i should be on the right page to begin this so the only difference i could detect in going through the note listing and i'll read it off to you it's a pretty extensive note listing but the difference between anbar and anbar december edition as far as i'm con as far as i could tell is that in the base there is a brown amber gris and a shamamatul atar amber atar note in um, the December edition, which is not in the original ambar. Everything else is the same. So the brand basically says that um, uh, the the differential factor here is the infusion of our own private batch of shamama zak two. <clears throat> which, if you're not familiar with shamamatul atar, it's a very old Indian atar method. 
there is an amazing, if you just kind of Google Shamama Atar or something, you'll, you'll come across a lot of different videos. Um, uh, and Exotic Sense, uh, gosh, I always forget his name, but Nikhil from Exotic Sense. Uh, he's a doctor, by the way, Dr. Nikhil. He, um, he went through like an entire thing on Shamama Atar, went to the place they're actually made in India, talked to the people who ran the company that's been there for 200 years or whatever the hell it is. Crazy backstory on it. Uh, if you're interested, I would urge you to check out that. It's a very complex process. They have their own spices and flowers and all that stuff they add to the, to the mix. Uh, and it says there's been an addition of a whale of ambergris to it, a whale of ambergris. So uh, Shamama Zak II, per, per se, was under the superintendence of Zak, distilled by a family acquainted to Digit and Zak, which brought in a vast experience of four decades in manufacturing natural atars and rue, which is like rue hus, um, which is a vetiver that's very famous in India. Besides being imbued with a surfeit of ambergris, there's an inclusion of various kinds of resins, fossil amber originated from the Himalayas, simmered for a fortnight through a stew, so through a slow boil method on wood fire. At the outset, the Anbar December edition commences with a revelation of honeyed Anbar, zesty lemon peel, royal ylang ylang, and refreshing bergamot. So that's a good place to start because um, on my skin, it opens up with this citrusy um, bergamot, with this petrol-like vibe, this resinous petrol is basically the way to describe it. And again, I don't own a full bottle. I can't say I've worn 100 mils of this stuff. Um, 100 mils is only like 130 bucks or something. So for something that they're claiming has all this expensive ambergris and all that stuff, you would think it would be a lot more than $130 for 100 mils. But uh, this is what they're saying. And um, so it basically smells like you took like petrol and you took this floral or maybe like um, maybe like uh, floral oil, like the oil from the flowers, stuck it in the petrol, mixed it all up, and set it on fire. And it has this sort of um, like petrol fire-like vibe, this resinous petrol-like vibe. Um, I really like the opening because, and, and even as the hours tick by, I like kind of what the fragrance does. It... Um, it has a little bit of bite even from the beginning, like you're smelling the oud kind of simmer up from the base and just hit you with a little bit of animalic notes from the beginning. It's not a super animalic oud, but there's something animalic enough in here that kind of keeps my attention, if that makes sense. And what's interesting is Peter from Fragrance View is one of the only people to review Anbar on YouTube, and he didn't really mention that animalic note, but there's no one in English that I saw that reviewed the December edition. So maybe the addition of the ambergris has done some things to the animalic side, or maybe I pick up more of the animalic bits than, than Peter does, but I like the animalic stuff in here. Actually, I have a very high dose for animalics personally, so I would say uh, I wish they were turned up even more, but I like that I can at least smell them. You know, I can smell the, the dirtiness um, from the base simmering up, if that makes sense. And the labdanum, which usually when you see a note tree, you know, the note tree is kind of listed based on the evaporation curve, right? So the citruses kind of begin in the top and because they evaporate off your skin very quickly and the heavier resins and myrrhs and labdanums and stuff like that is in the base, right? Well, this note tree, the labdanum is actually in the top. So the way that they have it listed here is they have vanilla, Ylang, lemon, bergamot, key lime, and jasmine sambac in the top, which, you know, um, uh, makes, makes seeing the vanilla and the um, uh, labdanum in the top is an interesting twist. And uh, Ylang, East Indian sandalwood, black pepper, pink pepper, cinnamon, saffron, rose damascena, prunes, uh, black currant, raspberry, green cardamom, and nutmeg in the heart with fossilized amber, myrrh, tolu balsams, apopanax, aged agarwood, aged agarwood, uh, benzoin, olibanum, tonka bean, patchouli, gray ambergris, black ambergris, and shamama zak too. That's that shamama tool atar I was telling you about, right? And so the labdanum and the vanilla is kind of in the top, hit you with that um, sort of uh, interesting uh, base right up front. So you almost feel like there's this slight uh, resinous, slight sticky, slightly sweetened vanilla right there in the beginning. But along with this very strange spicy thing, and maybe that's the ambergris creeping up, 
uh, salty, spicy, ambergris thing with um, this spicy, fruity, floral thing. So you notice that they mentioned uh, prunes and they mentioned black currant and they mentioned raspberry. Okay, and then they mentioned a bunch of spices. Uh, and so here it kind of, kind of comes across as this sticky, leathery, resinous, ambery, just girth. You know, there's just something that is a little bit heavy, uh, a little bit thick. From the vanilla and the labdanum and all of the resins, the myrrhs, the apopanax, but none of these fragrances from Digit and Zach that I've ever smelled wear heavy. Peter from Fragrance Review used the word translucent. He said that uh, Ambar wears translucent, like a second skin or something. Uh, I forgot. It has been a while since I've seen his review, but from memory, I remember him saying that... Um, he said that uh, uh, Ambar is translucent. And you know what? It's an, it's an interesting descriptor of all of the fragrances from Digit and Zach that I've smelled, not just Ambar. There's something in them that just doesn't feel heavy, even though they have all these heavy notes. And even though sometimes when you, when you smell it, you're like, man, I can smell the, um, I can smell the, the vanillas, the labdanums, the resins, the apopanax, which is sweet, sweetened myrrh. Um, and all of these heavier type notes, they never wear that way. They always wear like you're smelling a very lightened tincture. Like they took these ingredients and tinctured them and you're smelling it in like one one hundredth perfumer's alcohol, you know, which is of course how fragrances are made. Um, everything is diluted and all that stuff. No one's just going to put pure oud or pure olibanum or anything like that in these fragrances. Everything is diluted to a certain amount. But these fragrances almost wear diluted. You know what I mean? Like they don't, they, I wish they were heavier and heftier. I wish this was a $250 price tag and they gave you more essential oils and heavier ingredients that made it wear more like an Arise La Dore, which is of course my favorite brand at the, at the moment. Um, and it, there's just nothing uh, in these Digit and Zach fragrances that catch my attention. Like I said, second tier artisanal brand for me. If you gave me this, would I wear it? Yes, I would absolutely wear it. It's good enough where I want to wear it. Um, and, you know, I like the, there's this very strange, almost like elastic-y, rubbery feel to the floral. So it's mixed with Ylang and Jasmine Samba, okay? And so the Ylang adds this weird, elastic, rubbery thing with that very mythical banana smell everyone likes to talk about. There's a little bit of that in here, uh, and it complements the Jasmine Samba with ease. Uh, there's a few things when I wear an Indian brand specifically, Digit and Zach is an Indian brand, that I look for. Number one is the quality of the uh, jasmine, whether it's Grandiflorum or Sambach or whatever. I, I want to see the quality of the jasmine because that comes right from their backyard, right? Number two is the sandalwood. And um, the quality of the jasmine and the sandalwood in, in here are both well done. I like the way that the vanilla and kind of the fruits blend together. A bit powdery, a bit sweet, a bit um, this likability factor. They, they, they say that there is a um, prune note in here, which I must admit I can't think of any other perfumes that have a prune note. This dried, you know, almost fig-like smell. I guess I do like figs, um, and so I could completely see that because that instantly gives me this Middle Eastern vibe, right? A lot of a lot of them are grown in the Middle East. Um, so the fragrance has a little bit of everything. You notice it has a little bit of the smokiness from the oud and the olibanum. It has a bunch of resins. I mentioned myrrh, tolu balsam, ambers, the, the shamama atar, apopanax, all this stuff. It's got the ambergris, which should be very expensive, you would think. It would cost them more than $135 for 100 mils if they were using a lot of ambergris, like they say. But it does smell slightly salty and translucent, transparent, whatever you want to say. Um, and it, interestingly enough, I, I googled the name Anbar because I was like, that's interesting. So there's an old, long-lost city, I think, in modern-day Iraq named Anbar. Um, that uh, is one definition. The other definition is literally... It, Anbar in Arabic, according to this article I read, translates to perfume or, or ambergris or perfumed woman or something like that, right? Uh, according to this internet article. So if that's wrong, please don't attack me. Even though I was born in Jordan, I do not speak Arabic. And um, so they say that there is this like sugar-laced raspberries mixed with um, 
like the sour kind of black currant. And I get more of the sour black currant as the fragrance dries than I do the sugar laced uh, raspberry. Maybe the vanilla adds a little bit of that sugar feel to the raspberries. Um, I can I can totally see the weird prune thing that they're talking about. If you really kind of twist your mind a little bit, you can see it. And um, I almost get like this sour apple. Maybe it's a weird blend of the prune, blackcurrant, raspberry. I don't know. But almost like this sour green apple tends to come through. Um, but a lot of this transparent, translucent feel of the ingredients that you're smelling. That bothers me. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I want something heavier. I don't like the, like if you're someone who, when you smell an Arise La Dore, or you smell something that has heavy oud and you're like recoil, you're like, man, I really need something softer, lighter, easier to wear. This very well may be your brand. This is just personally not mine. Like I like my fragrances heavier. I like it when I smell it, but I just all, it's like I just want to bathe in the stuff because I want more of it to come out. Sometimes bathing in it doesn't necessarily uh, do the trick, but um uh, on a warm summer day or something, Digit and Zach sometimes would hit the spot, but I don't think it's something I would pay for. That's that's kind of the, that is the meat and potatoes of this review, actually. But um, uh, that powdery Elang with the touch of Oud, they say they use Oud as a fixative here, by the way. So they say Oud is used as a fixative, not as a primary note. Um, they basically say that, uh, where was that that I read it? Um... Anyways, it, it basically says oud is a fix is used as a fixative, uh, but but what's interesting is is maybe it's because they use some of that black ambergris, which is the real animalic smelling ambergris, um, and or I, I don't know, maybe it's a spotlight. Maybe the ambergris really does its job and shines a spotlight on the oud. But I do get a little bit of an animalic touch to this that I really wish was turned up. But I must admit, I mean, it's interesting enough that it keeps my attention. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like I'm, I spray it on. I'm like, boring, next. It doesn't do that. Um, I'm not like, fuck you, Anbar, next. I, um, I, I want to keep smelling it. I just want it to do something it never does. It's like waiting for a gymnast to do a cartwheel or something. And they're just kind of standing there. Like, they're all dressed up like a gymnast. And you're like, come on, do it, do it. And, and they just stand there, you know? And so I... Um, it gives you a little hint, you know, like they fake, they fake you out a little bit. They start the run, then they don't actually do the cartwheel. Um, so, so yes, it's, um, it's kind of one of those feelings for me. And it's, um, you know, there's nothing ultra funky in here, but there's just enough almost to tease you, you know, just a little bit of a tease. It teases your palate a little bit. So the original Anbar was 130, okay? And then the Anbar December edition was 135. So like I said, $5 more, you would... Yeah, you would think if they were using all this extra ambergris, it would be so much more expensive, but it's not. Also in the write-up, uh, they said that it is beckoningly encased in an elegantly designed 30 mil bottle. Well, originally, Ambar was 100 mils, but if you actually look at the pictures, it says Ambar December Edition 100 mil. So I guess it's just, a, I don't think it's a 30 mil for 135, but uh, in the actual blurb, it says 30 mils. Not that, I mean, everything is sold out on the website, by the way. But when I talked to Nitesh, he was saying he didn't know if they were just going to close up the brand and say that's it, if they were going to kind of continue making some of their most popular fragrances, if they were going to do one or two more releases before they kind of closed up the brand. He said everything's still up in the air. So I figured it would be a good chance to kind of review this and talk a little bit about it. Um, and the other thing I should mention before I go, while I'm, while, while I'm still thinking about it, is that uh, the amber in the base, uh, I, you know, it kind of um, suffers from the same disease, like I said, just to make sure I really pound the point home, is when I smell this, it, it smells about, it smells like something like Emperor's Court, for example, completely different fragrance, but when I spray it on, um, when I spray it on, for example, it almost smells like you're getting something that is like, 50%, okay? Like, they took the exact same base, and uh, it's like this, it's like 50% of the perfume is exactly the same in every single Digit and Zach fragrance I've smelled. And if you read some of the, um, if you read some of the comments for people um, who, there's such a similarity, like, there's obviously differences, but there's such a similarity. It's almost like, 
Um, it's almost like they took this kind of generic base and used it in every single one of their fragrances and then just tweaked a little bit here and there and bam, new fragrance, new fragrance. And I think that would really piss me off. Like if I, yeah, I mean the similarity is striking and these are just too random. I mean this, this is just the one I have because this is the one Peter very kindly sent me. Um, but the similarity is really striking. And when I talked to Natesh, he said a lot of these fragrances in this line that, that we're discussing here were made up of a lot of different um, sort of tinctures. Like they were tinctures that were made or co-distilled together to create this, this accord. But it, it almost feels like they use the same tinctures over and over and over and over, if that's the case. So that's my feeling on it. I mean, I hate to beat up on the brand, but um, that's kind of the way I feel. You know, for me, I would just wear Emperor's Court, honestly. I mean, uh, there's no reason for me to buy Anbar, Anbar December Edition, because... It does that thing where, yes, there's a little bit of a difference, but there's just not enough for me to want to pull the trigger on on anything that I've smelled. Even the one I really liked, Rising Mysore, I wouldn't pull the trigger on it because it suffers from a, from a, the same fatal disease, um, which is that similarity. Yes, there's differences. Yes, the sandalwood's amped up, but um, the, the similarities really kill what I've smelled. Now, to be fair, because I always like to be Switzerland, I like to be completely in the middle, an objective is that um, this brand has a line of fragrances that they, I guess, is like their animalic line, and I've never smelled. And I just got a decant like yesterday or the day before from a friend. Um, it was called Galia Reflection. And so that is supposed to be their very animalic line. So before I judge, I want to I want to kind of try that. Before I move on, I want to review the, Ga the Galia Reflection and see if we can get a really good, like my favorite Digit and Zach fragrance I've smelled. So far, everything is eh. You know, that's that's really the reality of the situation. It's eh. Would I have spent 135 bucks on this? No. Would I wear it if you gave it to me? Sure. Am I excited about it? No. Um, the similarity between Emperor's Court, just one I pulled out of the blue, is strikingly scary because there are many people who are like, man, I bought this and this and this and this, and they all smell the same. Like, well, why'd you keep buying them? Um, but anyways, that's um, an interesting little take on Digit and Zach. Um, still up in the air whether they're going to close up house or close up shop and do something else or what but uh, i very much appreciate uh one of my fragrance god people sending me the decant of anbar december edition really liked getting to know always ex excited to explore new fragrances and everything can't be a win i mean that's the reality sometimes you have to have these that are just kind of eh, you know doesn't have to be shit doesn't have to be fantastic sometimes it can just be and when you get to the point where I'm at my fragrance journey, it has to be fantastic or amazing or, or a unicorn or something to move you to buy because you have so many bottles to wear. There's just no point. Um, so, so yeah, that's my take. It's out of stock anyways on the website. Everything's basically out of stock except for maybe like one thing. So that kind of shows where, uh, where the brand is going since they're closing up shop. But um, it was a pleasure. Uh, I hope everyone had a fantastic Easter today. I wore my kind of Easter festive blue, my bright blue, uh, my spring blue, let's say, Easter. Tomorrow, hopefully, there's going to be an Easter Monday special. Um, I'm not going to give away what it is, but I've been working very hard on it. And But unfortunately, I do have to work on Easter Monday, which pisses me off. Uh, but I'll, I'll bitch more about that tomorrow. But, um, but yeah, so it will be a longer form list video for Easter Monday tomorrow. So thanks for watching. Cheers, guys. Have a great uh, night, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.